like everyone in this world, we like to communicate faster and have better connectivity to play virtual reality games, to do video conferencing, to download movies. And we could use Wi-Fi for that, Wi-Fi, but we hear lots, a lot of complaints about the performance of the Wi-Fi communication links. They're not always stable, they jitter, they have breakups. And a way out could be to use the light to communicate, Li-Fi. An advantage is that light signals do not go through the wall, so they also do not get interfered with by signals from other users. But then we like to build larger and larger systems that communicate all by light. Can we scale it up? That's a question that we addressed in a joint paper with Jona Bijsens from the Catholic Universiteit in Leuven. Hello, Jona. Hello, Jean-Paul. Uh, yes, I think it's a very good idea to, to take a look what we recently did together. I would first like to show you uh, a testbed, a testbed uh, which I developed uh, throughout my uh, PhD and which we can test different uh, elements of, of Li-Fi networks. And um, today we would like to talk about interference in Li-Fi networks, because as Jean-Paul just mentioned, light does not go through the wall, but if we, we are in one environment, then light can go everywhere. And um, we aim to solve the interference problem in this case. Um, let us look at, this, at, a, at an example. Suppose we have two transmitters in the ceiling, and we have two receivers on the ground or on our table or uh, as a mobile device. The question is then, can these two transmitters send simultaneously or do they, do they need to wait for each other? Yeah, because receiver one can um, detect the light from both transmitter one and transmitter two, for example. No. We may argue, why don't we give a very directional beam or why don't they use um, different wavelengths, for instance. Now, I can imagine that it makes sense to have a relatively wide beam from every point in the ceiling, because if I happen to interrupt one of these beams, there is still a connectivity from another point in the ceiling. And making beams steerable is also pretty expensive. So this network where we have many transmitters in the ceiling and where the users on the floor, the receivers, can detect signals coming in from multiple angles is, I think, a very interesting one and a very scalable one, where the whole room can use the same wavelength. It's relatively cheap to implement that using a single wavelength topic uh, implementation, and where also signals from multiple angles could indeed be used to an advantage. I remember that this looks a bit like what in a paper that I wrote in 1995, like a virtual cellular network. We don't have specific cells with different frequencies like we use in radio communication, but where it's one big area and you just watch out which is the, the, the most useful point in the ceiling. That is also called sometimes the cell-free network, where basically there is a very loose connection between points in the ceiling and users. But this requires, of course, quite a bit of organization where there need to be some kind of traffic control. And that's what you have been studying in this uh, study, Jona. Yes, indeed. And this um, can bring me to the next slide, um, where I would like to indeed take the, the wording of the traffic uh, in a traffic light metaphor. Um, and this can help us to identify the problem and also a solution for the problem. Um, the, the metaphor says that cars can drive in parallel as long as they do not harm each other. And below we have uh, three scenarios which I would like to, uh, to go over. Uh, on the left hand side you can see that the cars can drive in parallel because there is no possible conflict uh, between them. So they get a green light. In the middle we see that if the cars turn to the left simultaneously there will be an accident for sure and therefore they need coordination. Now on the right hand side, we see that they also want to turn to the left, but if they do this carefully, then they can still do this simultaneously. So here we see three different scenarios on how to uh, do coordination. And, and this the more you let this happen simultaneously, the better the throughput and the performance of the network is and the more traffic, the more message traffic the system can handle. Yes, indeed. And this is, of course, very interesting. Um, 
to see how this corresponds to, to our research, I would like to um, give you a research question. And this research question is, can we determine a crossover point for Li-Fi that optimally decides when we have the green light and when we have the red light? And the green light means, okay, two parallel transmissions are allowed because the interference is limited, as you can see in the figure below. If we have red light, then that means that the interference from the two transmitters will be harmful for the receiver. And therefore, they need, re um, they need coordination. Using this crossover point expression that we developed um, throughout our work, we also got the following insights. The first insight is that the, cross of, the crossover point uh, we uh, propose only relies on measurable parameters, such as the uh, signal quality, uh, the noise power, uh, an implementation gap, and in short, it, it does not require position information. So you need to, not to have a built-in navigation system and to tell where the client is. It can just be under full control of the network that measures signal strength. Yes, indeed. And this makes the, the system uh, cheaper, but also, also simpler, because the navigation system is another system that needs to interact with the communication system. As a second insight, we, um, we show that although we, we have an interference-limited system in LiFi, that the crossover point we found still depends on the noise floor. And this um, can seem a bit counterintuitively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine if I'm at a busy party where it's basically interference limited, that it's only the noise from all the others that determines how much I can explain about my own stories, my own uh, small talk. But now we say that even in such an environment, the noise, the background noise, is really critically important on how all the nodes should behave in that network. Yes, indeed. Strange. Strange, but it can also be, it's also a fair point because suppose we have uh, a party, everyone is talking, but we also have music. And, uh, or, or, so, or suppose we have our ears that are not really working well, then this also impacts the way we can hear other people. So. Yeah. Uh, and you mathematically optimize this eh? and you really notice that if there is uh, the noise floor is relatively low, you should have another strategy in whether or not you talk simultaneously as someone else uh, more than 1.5 meters apart from you. Uh, and that's different from when the signal to noise ratio is very poor. Yeah, indeed. As a last insight, we um, also found out that pairwise um, coordination among transmitters. So, so having a crossover point where we only look at two transmitters um, at, at the moment gives us the same conclusion as considering all the information from all the neighboring transmitters. Um, and this is visualized in the figure on the right. So the, the black lines represent our uh, crossover point expression and all the colors in the figure uh, correspond to the um, to the solution or the, the outcome we found uh, when we are considering all the all the nodes in the in the network and what what we see is that the red region clearly matches with the the, the black lines and therefore we we can consider a crossover point only by pairwise comparison uh, between the transmitters this also uh, simplifies the design because we can just always consider pairs and we do not need to consider the whole network at once. For an implementation that is great because the coordinating algorithm can do that step by step, just consider neighbors without uh, having to do the overall calculation, particularly if the network is very large and covers an open office area, those calculations may become uh, hard to do, particularly if all this needs to be done in real time to optimize the throughput of the network. Yes, indeed. Using these insights, um, we could then propose a two-level scheduling approach where we have, uh, on the one hand side, we have a course part, which is, runs on a Li-Fi controller, 
that collects neighbor relations and also allocates time channels to access points or transmitters, as we called them before. For example, access point one gets channel one, access point two gets channel two. The LIFI controller also based on the neighbor relations can determine the crossover point for different access points and can determine when each access point can be active and when not. On the other hand, the access points also have a great responsibility because they can or they have to schedule time slots for their endpoints. And they can do this freely within their time channel as long as they adhere to the restrictions set by the crossover point expression. And in short, this means that green light or the red light uh, from the crossover point we uh, just described before. So using this scheduling approach, we compared our, uh, our solution with state-of-the-art uh, literature in research, and we found out that we can get comparable uh, performance at the state-of-the-art, but greatly improve the complexity. And that with the complexity, I mean the, the computation time to find a feasible schedule to which all the uh, access points need to adhere to. Um, and this is important because having a low complexity favors practical rollout. So I guess that brings it closer to something that can be standardized, closer to a productization where the outcome and the results in a paper just uh, published is particularly in how to make it feasible. It's not uh, extending the total throughput and giving a throughput that is higher than what was previously reported as possible in literature. Yes, indeed. Uh, so there are recent advancements in the standardization. Uh, for example, in the ITU G.9991 uh, standard, uh, they are currently debating uh, about what should be the, the way uh, that interference is handled. And um, in the ITU standard, uh, they are going for a contention-free uh, access scheme, which is based on, uh, on time division multiple access. So it's, uh, it's very similar to the, to the work we did here. And um, we, we hope that the, the insights we got in this, in this, in this paper um, could also uh, bring benefit to the uh, standardization in this, uh, in this field. And you have details about this paper. Uh, interesting work where you uh, worked together. Uh, it's a joint kind of work from the KU Leuven, the Catholic Universiteit in Leuven, the lighting company Signify and Eindhoven University of Technology. Yes, uh, indeed. It was a, a very nice uh, collaboration when uh, I did my internship at uh, Signify in Eindhoven. Um, and I would like to invite you all to, uh, to check the details of our paper um, by using uh, this QR code. Uh, so thanks all for, uh, for watching. Or search for contention-free scheduling for Li-Fi networks. <laughs>